Our second scripture reading comes from the book of Luke. Hear the word of the Lord. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, which is just across from Jerusalem, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you. As you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which is no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked him, why are you untying the colt? <clears throat> they replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw the cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the ground. When he came near the place where the road goes down, the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Abraham Lincoln was a pretty smart guy, I think. He was having a debate one day with somebody who just flat out disagreed with him. And Lincoln got a little frustrated. He said, all right, let's do something different here. And he looks at his opponent and he says, how many legs does a cow have? His opponent looks at him and goes, four. Lincoln goes, okay, you're right, you're right. What would happen if we decide to call the cow's tail a leg? How many legs does the cow have then? His opponent looks at him and goes, well, five, of course. Lincoln goes, no, no, there you're wrong. It doesn't matter what you call the tail, it doesn't make it a leg. <laughs> Palm Sunday, we celebrate the arrival of our Lord into Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, the holy city. <clears throat> come down from the Mount of Olives and he comes in and people are cheering. Some of the people are cheering, I should say. We don't know how many. Been 10, could have been 20, could have been 100, we don't know. But they're cheering. Here he comes. Here comes our We've seen the miracles. This is the one. But then there's those authority figures. Rebuke your disciples. Tell them to be quiet. Sounds kind of absurd as we gather on Sunday. Why would they do that? Not exactly a news story. People have tried to hide and cover truths for centuries. As I was reflecting on this, I thought back in the early 1800s, the southern masters will try to keep the slaves from learning to read. Why? They don't want them to know the truth. Those who have did learn to read, like Frederick Douglass and such, will learn truths, will escape and share those truths about God's love and freedom and what humans are really capable of. People will always, oh, not always, often say, we change the truth, we hide the truth. History's filled with it. The early church did not want people to know that the earth is not the center of the universe for a change of their worldviews. <clears throat> truth has often been hidden. This is Holy Week. This is the week of truth. Pontius Pilate often vilified, will ask what I think may be very well be one of my favorite questions. What is truth? What is truth? The Pharisees don't want to hear this. The truth is, Christ is unique. He has demonstrated that. He is a threat to the power structure, not the way they think. But nevertheless, he is a challenge. Disciples, be quiet. We don't want this secret to be let out. This is the very week when it will be a nail to the cross. King of the Jews. So 
talk about being disruptive in Jerusalem. For centuries, power figures have tried to hide truths that were uncomfortable, unpopular. The story is no different. What I find powerful is Christ's words. If they're quiet, the stones will cry out. The stones will cry out. <clears throat> it's an interesting thing for Jesus to say. Janet, I'm going to trust that what I'm about to say you might agree with, but rocks don't lie. <laughs> is that a fair statement? Dr. Rennie's agreed with me. I'm taking that one. That might be a good day for me. In the past year, I've discovered I enjoyed something. I wish I'd have discovered it 30 years ago. It might have changed my career path. I enjoy greatly walking in ancient ruins where the stones are set upon one another, where ancient people live. They don't lie. They tell a story. We don't always understand it. But they don't manipulate anything. Ancient people would erect stones to mark a place of honor or something significant happens. It's in our language. We'll say something. We'll say, is that written in stone? Reference to the Ten Commandments. If it's written in stone, it must be true. Stones will cry out. And I wonder if this simple point on his part is an archaeological point. Or is it not just a moment of foreshadowing for at the end of this week we will celebrate another stone the one rolled away revealing the truth of who Christ is you see Jesus understood something no matter what we cover up no matter how much we manipulate, no matter how much the language changes, the truth will be known. And that's really what this week is about, is the truth. The truth that we are all God's creation. The truth is that love, not force of arms, brings us together. The truth that death does not have the last word. The truth that Christ is unique, divine, and it doesn't matter how we cover it up, how people speak out or don't speak, the stones will cry out if we are silenced. Holy Week. And we are faced with that challenge. Do we cry out, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord? Do we dance and celebrate our King's arrival in the Holy City? Or do we allow our voices to be silenced? It won't matter. The truth will come out. Stones tell stories. They tell the stories of the yeah. universe. They tell the stories of our planet. It is in those stones where fossils occur. They don't lie. And while stones will continue to tell those truths, it is we who are called to speak uh -huh. truth into the world. We uh -huh. who are called to announce the arrival uh -huh. of the king. Uh -huh. Remember this day. Easter Sunday will come. Uh -huh. We will all dress up in bright, colorful clothes. I don't know about you, but I'm counting on some candy. But that doesn't, all the festivities don't cover over the events uh, of whatever happened in that town. Uh, this week is time to renew uh, and to celebrate. 
Do not let your voices be silenced, friends. The love of Christ is meant for all. It's not a gift to be hoarded in your closet, but to be shouted. And yes, even to wave your palms. Stones don't lie, but neither do we. We will continue to sing the blessings of our Lord. Let us pray. Loving God, Lord Jesus, you have arrived in our presence. And we sing and we shout with acclamation. Blessed are you who have come in the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus, we ask that through your mighty power, we be given the courage not to be silenced. That when people in this world push us down, tell us that we are naive for loving our neighbors, let us stand up and say that we love all people that we choose to be come together, that we choose to follow you. Lord, you have touched our hearts with the truth. Let us live that truth now. All these things we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Holy Week is a busy week, as I've said before, and I will say again. I want you to, I invite you to spend the next few minutes Think about this week. When will you pause at the empty tomb? 